Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive game dev tutorial. In recent weeks, SGDK has had a major update and I've been using the updated version to um, take a look at the Alex Kid remake project just to see how I'm going to teach it and what order I'm going to teach things and that's going quite well. But in the meantime, as promised, I have a, a small batch of standalone modular tutorials to give you. If anyone has any special requests for topics to cover, then let me know. I might be able to squeeze one or two more in, but for now I plan to cover topics such as tile animation and tile scrolling. However, before covering those more meaty topics, we're going to start off here today with a more light topic. It's more of an addendum to the final tutorial of 2024, where we learned how to create complex level maps using a sprite. One of the things we looked at in that video was how to use a script, an a sprite script to um, create high priority and low priority tiles within a single layer. So I'm sure you all know what that is, but just to remind you, it's just where you take some tiles in the foreground layer and make it so the player can either appear in front or behind those tiles. So for example, if you have a column or some kind of object in the way of the player, it can add a nice sense of 3D to a level. While that method of doing high priority tiles did work, sometimes if you had a very large layer with lots of high priority tiles, it could take a long time to compute to run the script. So what I'm giving you today is a new method I've been doing since then to essentially do the set the high priority tiles in a manual in a manual way. Now when you say do something manually, it sounds like it's gonna take a longer time, but I found this way to be a lot more quicker and more efficient, so I want to share it with you today. For this example, we're going to be using some graphical assets from one of my favorite and most nostalgic Mega Drive games, Alien 3. This first level here is a good example of how you can use high priority tiles to add a bit of depth to the background. So you can see here we have one single foreground layer in front of a um, product scrolling background layer. In that same foreground layer, some for some columns, the player appears in front and for some columns, he appears behind. It adds a nice bit of depth to the scene. One of my favorite things to do whenever I play one of these old games is to analyze how they set up their palettes. In this level, the foreground uses two palettes, PAL0 and PAL1. In theory, you could use all four palettes within a single background. You just have to make sure that each tile is assigned a single palette. While I think the graphics of the game does look very nice and it really captures the spirit of the IP, I can't help but notice, but um, there's lots of duplication of colors within each palette. So for example, you can see the black color reappear in lots in the four different palettes as well as all these grays. This particular level is only using 44 unique colors out of a possible 61. Actually, that said, in the future, we will be covering a technique we can use to use more than 61 colors within a single screen, but we'll be covering that in a different tutorial. Okay, so here are the level assets we're going to be using. We're just gonna be using the top part of the level one foreground and this part only uses PAL1, so we just use one single palette. The actual one also has some tiles which uses PAL0, but we're just using PAL1 to keep things simple. And what we want to do here, of course, is to make uh, some parts of these stairs and also these columns to appear in front of the player, so they need to be set as high priority. The first thing we need to do is create a new file with the same graphics, so we're simply going to Control a to select all, then Control c to copy, Control n to open a new um, file and it will select the correct size, the same size as our previous one, then Control v in the new file. And now we have a copy of our graphic here. Next up, we want to copy the first four rows, so that'll be uh, 64 colors, 64 entries, and we're going to paste that into here. And then we're going to set the colors to indexed. And of course here, the first row represents PAL0, the uh, second row is PAL1, then PAL2, then PAL3. And we're only using one palette here, PAL1. The next thing we need to do is delete all of the tiles, which will be low priority. So we only leave the tiles which we want to be high priority. And remember that we can only set high or low priority on a tile by tile basis. So don't delete part of a tile, you have to delete a whole tile. And of course each tile is eight by eight pixels. And to make sure you don't accidentally delete part of a tile, I recommend um, converting the graphic to a tile map. And if you think I'm going too quickly here, just check a couple of lessons ago where I covered the how to create um, complex maps in Aceprite. So now I'm going to delete the tiles we don't want. I'm going to delete all the low priority tiles. And I think this part of the stairs here, we need to keep as high priority because when the player goes down the stairs, that's where she appears behind this little block here and we need to delete most of the ground because most of the ground is low priority. The player character appears in front of it. And then of course, we're going to leave the um, the front part of the, the black columns, the frontal black columns, the ones at the back we can delete because they're low priority, but we're going to keep the um, the big columns in front, the columns which the player is going to appear behind.
Okay, so now we're left with all the assets we want to be high priority, which we want to appear in front of the player. If we now switch back to our original level graphic, uh, these parts in red here are going to be the high priority um, palettes. So the this second one here represents power one, but high priority power one. So anything using this palette will appear as high priority in our game. So how do we transfer the high priority assets to our original graphic? What we need to do is to give those final four um, rows, the high priority palettes, their own unique palette, which is completely different from any colors which appear in the low priority palettes. If we press Ctrl N, then return to open another file within a sprite and then look at the preset palettes, we'll eventually find the master system one. The master system palette is very useful in this circumstance, not just if you want to create master system style graphics, but for our purposes here, we need 64 colors, which are completely unique. And uh, fortunately, the Master Systems, this Master Palette is just 64 colors. I think when it comes to actual colors on the screen, you can only display, I think it's uh, two times 15 plus one. So I think it's 31 colors on screen at the same time. If you recall, the Mega Drive Palette that we've been using goes up in steps of 32, whereas the Master System one doesn't. The only one care uh, color we have to be careful of is the black color, the first color in the Master System Palette, because the RGB values are 000, which is the same as the blacks which appear in our own graphics. So we need to change them so we can change the numbers on them slightly. So it's still black, but a type of black that we don't have in our Mega Drive Palette. With that done, the next step is to copy the entire 64 color Master System palette and paste it into our second file, the one with the higher priority assets. You can see here that the colors have now changed to the Master System palette and the uh, one, the colors, since we're only using Power Zero, the um, colors in the second row should be assigned to all the assets we got in our uh, graphic here. So you can see here I've changed all the second row to green that's all power one so all, all the assets change to green if your colors didn't change then you probably forgot to change the color mode over to index so make sure you do that before you paste the master system palette over next up we're again going to take that master system palette with the slightly changed black color and we're going to paste it into the final four rows of our original file the final step will be go back to our higher priority file and simply copy all of the assets and paste them into our original file. Make sure you click left click into the top left hand corner where the palettes are rather than where the tiles are. Then you can do control A, control C and paste them. And now finally we have our higher priority assets within our original file. And just to remind you how the palettes are arranged on the left hand side. So the first four rows represent the um, palettes 0, 1, 2 and 3, the low priority versions. The middle four rows, the blue, you can just ignore. And then the final four rows are our high priority palettes. So what we've essentially done here, we've done manually what the script did um, automatically in the lesson two videos ago. In practice, I find this method much faster than using the um, script. But of course, if you still like to use a script, you've had no problems with it, then please go ahead and use, the, use that method instead. And before I save these files and import them into actual game, I always like to double check that there's no um, mix up, there's no crossovers between the different palettes. So I like to make each new unique palette, both higher priority and low priority versions, their own color, and make sure that each tile has only one single palette within it. And if it's the, um, if it's the um, transparent color, then that's okay. You just have to make sure there's no pinks bleeding into the green squares and vice versa. And once you're satisfied, everything is okay. You can change it back to the original colors, save, and we can put it into our game. And the end result looks like this is our Streets of Rage characters against the, and, back, and Shinobi background with the alien foreground. And you see this bit here with the stairs uh, is being higher priority as we wanted it to be. Maybe I could have made the two tiles to the left and right higher priority too. And we've also got it so that the big columns in the front are higher priority. So the pair appears behind them. Whereas the smaller columns is behind appears behind the player. So again, it adds a bit of 3D depth to the scene. I'll include the um, the code for this if for Patreon supporters over on my Patreon. But this is just basically the same program we used a couple of lessons ago. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that SGDK recently had a major update and that is version 2.11. If you decide to update, now most of your old code should still work. The only major thing, the tricky thing is the fact that Fix 22 to int has now changed. So it's now this one here, F32 underscore to int. Rather than manually changing these one by one, you can simply control F, click on the arrow on the left hand side, 
and then on the right hand side you'll have this little option to replace all of them at the same time so if you click that whatever is searched in the top box will be replaced by the whatever's in the bottom text box and remember whenever an updating sgdk you might have to delete your boot folder which you'll find under the src folder a new boot folder will then be generated when you compile Okay, so that's about it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe. I'm interested in this. And if you'd like to support my work further and get early previews of what I'm up to, then I have a Patreon account and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.